Atrophic rhinitis is defined as a chronic inflammation of the nose which is characterized by progressive atrophy of the nasal mucosa including the glands, turbinate bones and even the nerve elements that leads in the decrease of smell sensation. This inflammation is characterized by formation of scanty viscid secretions and it forms green color crusts which emit a foul odor. So, this disease is also known as Ozaina because of the foul smell and the greenish crusts. And the removal of these crusts reveal roomy nasal cavity. So, because of the atrophy of nasal mucosa, turbinates and glands, the nasal cavity becomes roomy. Atrophic rhinitis is of two types, primary and secondary. Let's learn about primary atrophic rhinitis etiology. This chronic inflammation of the nose can be due to hereditary causes, developmental causes, endocrinal, racial, nutritional deficiencies, infection, autoimmune causes, and atomic imbalance as well as surfactant deficiency in the nasal secretion. So for the etiology, you can remember by a mnemonic hernia in which H stands for hereditary, E stands for endocrinal, R for racial, N for nutritional, I for infection and A for autoimmune or autonomic imbalance. So hernia stands for etiology of the primary atrophic rhinitis. It is autosomally inherited in 30% of the cases. In developmental etiology, it is seen due to congenital spacious nasal cavity and poor pneumatization of the maxillary antrum. In endocrine cause, it is seen mostly during the puberty, menopause and sometimes in menstrual cycle, sometimes during the reproductive age. And you should remember, the symptoms of this disease aggravate due to estrogen deficiency. In this endocrine, it is of two types, estrogen dependent and estrogen non-dependent. Coming to the race, it is most commonly seen in yellow people and whites and also in American Negroes. Nutritional deficiencies leading to atopic rhinitis are iron, vitamin A and vitamin D. And in infection, the most common organism to be seen in atopic rhinitis is the Klebsiella ozeni. This organism produces foul green colored crusts in the nasal cavity. And other organisms are Cocobacillus fetidis ozena, Bacillus mucosus, Diptheroids and Haemophilus influenzae. Autoimmune pathology comes either from viral infection, malnutrition or immune deficiency. These factors further triggers the destructive autoimmune process in the nasal mucosa that may cause large roomy cavities and which further leads to crusting. The autonomic imbalance means reflex sympathetic dystrophy syndrome. It causes vasodilation and the hyperemic decalcification of the turbinates which is followed by vasoconstriction. And the surfactant deficiency in the nasal secretion leads to ciliary dysfunction and stasis of the nasal secretions. Coming to secondary atrophic rhinitis, it is a long-standing purulent sinusitis. It is seen mostly in iatrogenic causes like radical tubectomy and post-radical tubectomy. It is also seen in tuberculosis, syphilis and leprosy cases in rhinoscleroma and deviated nasal septum or DNS. So here DNS causes one side atrophy. If this cavity is wider and the nasal septum is deviated to this side, it causes the atrophy of this side leading to wide cavity. So this is a DNS on the right side here due to the wide cavity formed by the deviation of the nasal septum it also forms atrophy of this side leading to secondary atrophic rhinitis. The most common symptom is the nasal obstruction. This nasal obstruction is formed due to the crust formation and stagnation of the discharge. 
they are visible greenish yellow nasal discharge which progressively forms crust on drying there is a severe offensive smell which is called as ozena due to the anaerobic infection and this offensive smell is often noticed by the surrounding people and the most important term is merciful anosmia this offensive smell that is ozena it makes the patient a social outcast but the patient himself is unaware of the smell due to marked anosmia so this anosmia is caused due to degeneration of the nerve fibers so it causes merciful anosmia of that own patient he is unaware of the bad smell and on crust removal we can see bleeding or epistaxis from the nose now let's learn about the signs that means what a doctor can examine in a patient so the signs in atopic rhinitis are roomy nasal cavities with atrophy of the mucosa and turbinates can be seen through the nasal examination greenish yellow nasal discharge with crust formation which usually begins posteriorly so you can see it in posterior rhinoscopy foul smell can be noted during examination and nasal miasis may be present what is mean by nasal miasis miasis meaning formation of maggots these are formed due to decreased nerve sensation and increase foul smelling discharge from the nose so you can see here this is the nasal crusting in atopic rhinitis the atopic changes may also be seen in the pharyngeal mucosa that can also appear dry and with crusts which is called as atopic pharyngitis we will learn about it later and some similar changes may also occur in larynx which leads to cough and hoarseness of voice that is called as atopic laryngitis and it can also cause little amount of hearing impairment because of the obstruction of eustachian tube so atopic rhinitis in severe cases may also affect the pharynx leading to atopic pharyngitis the larynx leading to atopic laryngitis and also the ear that leads to decrease hearing and also sometimes middle ear effusions pathology of the atopic rhinitis is accumulation of lymphocytes and plasma cells and the main pathology is the metaplasia metaplasia is the normal ciliated columnar epithelium of the nasal mucosa is lost and it is transformed or replaced into squamous epithelium there is ciliary destruction and decrease in number and the size of nasal glands there is bone resorption which leads to turbinate destructions the ciliated columnar epithelium of the nasal mucosa is lost and it is replaced by stratified squamous epithelium this is the main pathology in this disease and there is also the atrophy of the seromucinous glands and the nerve elements that leads to decrease in the nerve sensation which forms anosmia or decreased smell sensation in the investigations saccharine test in which we can note decrease nasal mucociliary clearance time serum iron and protein levels for malnutrition culture and sensitivity of the nasal discharge to know about the organism and prescribe particular antibiotics x-ray of pns to know about the maxillary sinusitis and the rooming of the nasal cavity CT scan nose and paranasal sinuses to note the mucosal thickening reabsorption of the ethmoidal bulla and uncinate process is seen hypoplasia of the maxillary sinuses is also seen in this atopic rhinitis roomy nasal cavities can be noted erosions and bowing of the lateral nasal wall can be noted and finally atrophy of the turbinates can also be seen in the ct scan of nose and paranasal sinuses x ray chest to note tb bronchiectasis and any lung abscess serologies for syphilis that is vdrl tpha and tbi tests sputum for acid fast bacilli mantox test can be done for tb nasal smear studies can be done to suspect leprosy complement fixation test and biopsy for detection of rhinoscleroma 
coming to the treatment medical treatment it can be done by douching we introduced alkaline nasal douch for this and estradiol nasal spray it increases vascularity of the nasal mucosa which leads to regeneration of the seromucinous glands 25% glucose in glycerin can be used this is used after the crushed removal and the nose is painted with 25% of the glucose in glycerin this inhibits the growth of proteolytic organisms that are responsible for the bad smell streptomycin can be given 1 gram per day for 10 days it has given good results in reducing crusting and odor it is also effective against the klebsiella organisms the placental extract injection is injected submucosally in the nose autogenous vaccines are of some use rifampicin tablet in cases of tuberculosis and the mostly used solution is the chemicitine anti ozena nasal solution this is a local antibiotic spray it is used as spraying or painting in the nose it eliminates the secondary infection and the components of this chemicitine is the chloromycetin estradiol and vitamin d2 mans nasal paint can be used and potassium iodide is given orally alkaline nasal douche by using a combination of three solutions it is a sodium bicarbonate sodium biborate and sodium chloride these three solutions are mixed in 280 ml of warm water to make it a solution sodium bicarbonate helps to loosen the nasal crusts and sodium biborate acts as an antiseptic and sodium chloride makes the solution isotonic This solution once mixed in warm water is transferred into a 6 inch long rubber tube which is fitted to 20 ml of plastic syringe. This syringe is introduced into the nasal cavity while the patient bends forward and keeps saying the word K to close the nasopharyngeal isthmus. It is done twice daily till the disappearance of the crusts is seen. Now coming to the surgical treatment. It is the Young's operation in which one nostril, only one nostril is closed completely by raising two round flaps from the inner mucosal and outer cutaneous layers in the nasal vestibule and they are sutured in the midline. That means these are the two nostrils in which one nostril is closed completely by raising two flaps and modified Young's operation is also a similar procedure in modified young's operation both the nostrils two nostrils are closed but 3 mm of the opening is kept both the young's operation and the modified young's operation are done for 6 months of duration and after 6 months the flaps are opened and you can note the reversal of the normal nasal cavity and you can see the reduction of the crust formation in apart from 6 months it can also be recanalized after 12 to 18 months with a tridate incision which is also called as mercedes benz incision so this is a pre operative picture and here you can note two flaps on either side drawn circumferentially and they are sutured in the midline so you can note the cutaneous flap sutured and this is the post operative heel flap This is the tridate or Mercedes Benz incision which is done for recanalization often in 12th or 18th month this was for young's operation and this is modified young's operation in which both the nostrils are closed and a small opening of 3 mm is left in both nostrils the main disadvantage of these operations is severe nasal blocking and the advantages of this modified young's operation is we can note the progression of the disease by monitoring it with 2.7 mm of nasal endoscope and within the 3 mm opening the glucose in glycerin drops can be instilled both the nostrils can be operated at one sitting and the nasal breathing can be preserved no complaints of denasal voice better cosmetic result and better cosmetic result 
some other operations are lotan sagar's operation wilson's operation antral mucosal transplantation into the nasal cavity vestibuloplasty in lutten slager's operation we do the fracture of the maxillary walls and we displace the lateral nasal wall medially it reduces the roominess of the nasal cavity and decreases the disease wilson's operation here submucosal injection of the teflon paste is used this is the teflon paste which is given submucosally the antral mucosal transplantation into the nasal cavity to the intranasal androstomy vestibuloplasty is raising a lateral shelf from the nasal vestibular flap to cover the turbinates so guys this is all about the atopic rhinitis the definition the types etiology pathology signs symptoms investigations and management if you like this video do subscribe to my channel